So, you want to start playing and running a campaign in the Midgard campaign setting by Kobold Press, but you have absolutely no idea where to start because you've seen the world book, the Midgard world book, with its almost 500 pages of pure lore and world building. You've seen the map with all its weird names and everything on it. You've seen the gazillion books that Kobold Press has put out and is putting out in the future for this campaign setting alone, and you have no idea where to start well trust me I get that question a lot but since I've been playing in Midgar for a long time I thought it was time to start a video series on how to Midgard Hi there fellow Dungeons and Dragons players and especially Dungeon Masters because this is for you the game masters who want to run a Midgard game in Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition because there is a lot of stuff out there for the Midgard campaign setting by Cobalt Press and I get a lot of questions of people asking me what books do I need to buy, where do I start, uh, what lore, what are cool hooks, plot hooks and adventure hooks and what are some cool NPCs to work with and I want to answer all of that in this video series. So before I start with this episode 1 I want to tell you if you have any question regarding Midgard or regarding any of the books that that uh, Cobalt Press has put out for Midgard, like the ones on my shelf you can see here, but also other ones because I have almost every book by Cobalt Press, not all of them are on my shelf. Um, just ask it, ask it in the comments below. Just put it in the comments below, hit the thumbs up, put it in the comments below, uh, ask me a question and I will try to answer as many questions as I can in this video series. This is something I want to do together with you people to help you understand the Midgard campaign setting and help you see how I... I see the Midgard campaign setting. Let's just let's just start with the start. People ask me where the hell do I start with Midgard? Because the thing is huge. I had a player of mine who we are now starting a campaign in the, in Midgard, and he was like, "Okay, when I see that map, I go completely crazy. I don't know what to do." And um, uh, it's big, it's too big, and I can see as a dungeon master some people have that same problem. But let's just look at the map for example. Let's just look at the map. I'll put it in the in the video right now and is if you look carefully and this is my opinion and I've never seen this written down anywhere but this is my opinion this resembles Europe. I mean the bottom half resembles like the top half, the top part uh I mean the bottom resembles the top part of uh, of Africa, which are the, the Southlands in this campaign setting. There's even a tiny part that looks a bit like, like Italy going down. I mean, you can see the mainland and then on top you can see something that resembles Norway and, and all those countries in the north. And to the left there's even islands that you can call the uh, UK or whatever. And it actually kind of resembles that. The center of this map is the most for me the most western uh feeling campaign setting middle medieval uh type of fantasy campaign setting you can find i mean this is a campaign setting where there are knights where there are like villages that do all kinds of stuff, like the, the medieval stuff but then of course in a, a high magic fantasy setting called midgard and i just want to say to you if you want to start in midgard for me, the perfect place to start is in the center. Because in the center of Midgard, there is a town called Zobag, which they also call uh, the crossroads of the Midgard campaign setting of the lands we know and we see on this map. And I have my big fat book right here. And I will talk about the Midgard campaign setting in this video series. And I, when I talk about other books that you can use uh, for the Midgard campaign setting, you can uh, I will show them to you, I will talk about them. Uh, but I will would start in a little town called Zobek. Why is it the perfect starting point? Well, first of all, it's an easy starting point. It is nothing special in the way that it all feels like um, a good old medieval um, city village that is it's they call it the free city of Zobek. yes i'm still trying to explain what i mean they call it the free city of Zobek, which is like a big city and what makes it special and what makes it the crossroads is that like almost all rivers 
like the main trading route rivers they come in and they go out of Sobek like the big roads from the north from the south from the east from the west and from other sides they go into uh, so the free city of Sobek so it is an important a very important trading post it is everything you need and there is a lot of stuff in here uh, to get your characters hooked into the story a lot of stuff you can use for backgrounds and the lot now if you buy the book, if you buy the Midgard World book, if you can find it, because if you're in Europe, uh, tough luck, because uh, I, there's a lot of people that have a lot of trouble finding it and getting it to their doorstep, but there's always the PDF version, whatever. Um, reading through the Zobek chapter uh, could prove very useful if you start there. Um, all the other chapters, to me personally, they are optional. So you take a chapter you, you're interested in and you want to steer your campaign towards, then you read that chapter and you see if there's any story hooks or anything you, you want to use. But Zobag, if you start with Zobag, it is always a good idea to read the entire uh, Crossroads and Zobag section because there's some very interesting stuff in there. Now, before I go into like some of the interesting stuff in there, I just want to point out that... Um, I was not prepared, oh it's right here, um, that you, if you buy the Midgard campaign setting it is always wise to also go for the Midgard, Midgard Heroes Handbook which is basically a Xenatra's guide to everything but this is like a Xenatra's guide to Midgard. Uh, or Xanathar's Guide to Midgard. This is like uh, the book that replaces Xanathar's Guide. It has new subclasses, it has new um, races, it has all kinds of stuff for the players. It's big enough, it's hardcover, uh, all kinds of crazy Dragon Rider stuff. Um, you can use, pick this one up as well, give it to your players because your players will be even more excited to play in a Midgard uh, campaign setting. Now the cool thing about Midgard campaign setting is that it is completely com uh, compatible with uh, uh, Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition as in you can build an entire Dungeons and Dragons 5e character the way you want it and you can place it in Midgard. So you always use the uh, player's handbook as a base for your class and then you take the Midgard uh, stuff because there are some differences for Midgard, but there are also a lot of stuff that is just the same. Uh, it's the basic, same basic ID. It's just completely different. I, I know I'm probably not making sense. Let's start in Zobek, the free city of Zobek. Now, free city of Zobek is an entire city by itself. It has churches, it has uh, all kinds of districts. For example, it has a dock district, of course, because a lot of rivers go in there, a citadel district, it has a lower Zobek market district. And something that immediately strikes as interesting and could immediately work as some background stuff for your players is the gear district. The gear district in Midgard, there is a race called um, Gearforged, which are basically the Midgard version of Warforged in the Dungeons Dragons 5th edition. Uh, game uh, they just gave it a different name gave it some different abilities stuff like that and the gear forged are the same idea they're basically a metal and gears and all kinds of oily parts put together with magic bound by magic and they become a character and most of the gear forge live in the gear district but the gear district is not necessarily named the gear district because of that um, it is also because there's a lot of dwarves there that do clockwork and uh, there's a lot of engineers there maybe somebody is even working on 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 new types of of ammunition or weapons or i don't know binoculars or whatever like all of these steampunk influences for midgard are kind of like there's a lot of stuff that is in the gear district and i call it steampunk which it is in essence it's not steampunk but i'm calling it steampunk uh for ev reference that is the main difference for me um between say the forgotten realms and midgard and that is midgard has a little bit more industrialization like more steampunk edgy vibes like Wild Wild West kind of stuff, uh, mechanical stuff, there's airships, there's there's even a train running somewhere in Midgard if I'm not mistaken. Um, although it's very low profile still and it's all new technology, it is there. And in the Forgotten Realms, Faerun, not a lot of that is there. Although there's a lot of that in uh, the Eberron campaign setting. So for me, uh, Midgard is the perfect setting in between Faerun and Eberron campaign setting. In the middle you got Midgard, you got very 
old school high fantasy setting uh, high high magic fantasy setting and you got a little bit of that steampunk vibe going on for people who can dig that um, so that's for example as a very uh, cool part for me at least for the gear for the uh, Zobek the city of Zobek free city of Zobek the gear district could be like your your you could be like a clockwork dwarf who worked there who had his own shop and now is on an adventure to get like this one piece he needs to build something or you could be a gear force that lived there or whatever the gear district is there uh, there is of course a temple district there's a lot of rivers going through it it's all kind of all that jazz and um, and then you get like a bunch of pages all lore and politics and stuff going on in Zobek, around Zobek and I'm not going into all of it. I'm just going to say one thing that really strikes me as interesting and has been the base of some of my campaigns for a few times and that is the um, 10 years below the mountain ID and I'm trying to find it. I prepared this but I, I can't I lost it. I don't know why I lost it. Uh, the Dwarven Trials. To the north northwest of Zobek there are mountains. And in those mountains there are a bunch of dwarven clans, like a lot of them. Uh, dozens of dwarven clans who are sometimes allies. Sometimes they are at war with each other, sometimes they're completely neutral and everything, but they are there in those mountains and they span through the through mountains and they dig and they, they try to find uh, gems and everything and sometimes they dig so far that they get into another kingdom of other dwarves and they go to war or they make peace or whatever. There's a bunch of dwarves there. And one thing is this, the, the moment I read this I thought it was so freaking cool, 10 years under the mountain. What these dwarves do is, every now and then, say every 10 years or so, I don't know, they um, raid villages, cities, uh, and places that have all races, humans, dragonborn, whatever, um, and they take as many slaves as they can get. The ones who are just they the ones who drop on their knees, put their hands up, they're okay. They're just going to take them. The ones that fight back are going to get killed or taken. And the ones that really, really fight back, they just get killed. But what these dwarves do is they take these hostages, let's say they take a thousand hostages and they put them under the mountain. They put them in their mine and let them work in their mine. And they are slaves, but they are the kind of slaves that are um they're not slaves to orcs or trolls. So these slaves get food, they get drinks, uh, they don't get whiplashes. Um, they just get, they just need to work under the mountain. If they try to flee, of course they get killed. And they just work their freaking ass off for 10 years and they become entirely bitter or whatever. And after 10 years, these slaves are released on top of a mountain and have to get back to society on their own and society already knows if somebody gets taken we'll see them in 10 years if they survive the mine of course uh, and this is a way for these dwarves to tell the outside world like hey we're here do not attack us don't try to attack us we're dwarves we'll take you hostage if you attack us and we win we will take you hostage and you're working for us for 10 years and then we'll set you free so not a lot of people attack these dwarves because they're afraid of that. But this is such a cool idea and such a Midgard way of looking at things for a character who your character could be a dwarf hating person who spent 10 years under the mountain and he's like I've spent 10 years under the mountain and now I'm looking for revenge or something like that or the complete other way around maybe somebody got taken hostage by the dwarves and saw the dwarven ways is now completely in love with dwarves and wants to join the dwarves wants to join a dwarven clan because he wants to live amongst the dwarves maybe he found like true love with the dwarves like forbidden love at first and then and now then he lived among dwarves and then he went on adventure so he's kind of like this human dwarf hybrid or anything these dwarves take all races by the way so 10 years is it's not a lot for an elf or a dwarf but it is a lot for a human 
uh, for a human that's 10 years. I mean, that's a long time for a dwarf. That's like the same as saying you need to work for a month under the mountain, which is a pain in the ass, but it's okay and it is doable. And it is this kind of stuff, and there's all kinds of stuff from this, from gaining the rank of knightlyhoods to a mercenary companies. There are mercenary companies uh, written out right here in the book of uh, how you can run them, uh, which one are in, in um, in Zobek. Then there is an entire section on all like the the clans, the dwarven clans, for example, uh, Hammerfell is the, like a very famous dwarven clan and they are famous for sometimes just closing their doors for several years, nobody gets in or out, and then they come out with an entire new a uh, piece of, of, of weapon or an entire new airship or they found a new type of jam or they closed their doors because they were fighting orcs or goblins in the mountain which they encountered or a dragon whatever um, th th those clans are all written out in the book right here and I mean this book is thick and if you want to know where to start so back is a perfect place because it is written out so well and so easy for you and it is actually for a Midgard like Cobalt Press says like almost literally says like start here it's like a start here arrow uh, on the map like right here is the starting point it is the center of the Midgard campaign setting of the map and from there you can go wherever the heck you want now I want to share one more piece of interesting stuff uh, for from uh, the, 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 the for Sobek and that is in the Warlock Grimoire. It's actually in the other Warlock Grimoire, if I'm not mistaken. And in the Warlock Grimoire, the first one, uh, I've not done my research well enough for this one, but in the Warlock Grimoire, they talk about the under city that is under Zobek. So um, there is an entire network, like a sewer system under Zobek. And that is an entire world and an entire city with merchants and with everything. There's even stores and inns and like it's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle style thing, but it's very big. It spans across the entire uh, 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 city and even a little bit outside of the city. The entire sewer system has stores, has everything. And that you can find in the Warlock Grimoire Volume 1, if I'm not mistaken. I'll put it in the comments or put it uh, in the comment in the thingy below and which one exactly, but I'm 99% sure it's in this one. Um, and there's like, there is this, there is this race in Midgard called the Red Folk which are rat folk and they actually live mostly in those sewers and they have all kinds of stuff where they can crawl out steal something and go back in for example they have they even have like tiny little holes in inns which are above the ground and they crawl out of these holes under the counter take a few brats take a few bottles take some coin take whatever they can grab take it and just go back into the thing and then five minutes later they're on the other side of town suddenly and nobody's expect uh, uh, they're not a suspect of, of anything because they traveled so freaking fast, which is cool idea. There is this red folk, which you actually is a playable race in the Midgard Heroes Handbook. I know I'm talking about all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, now, that was like, that it was the thing, all, <clears throat> that was everything I want to say about the uh, Zobek part of the Midgard campaign setting. I've been trying to write a script for this video series, but I've miserably failed at that so I've decided to just flip through this book and go about it section per section but I will answer your questions I will answer all of your questions and before I go I just want to say that if you ask me what is your favorite book by Cobalt Press in the Midgard campaign setting ever then I have to answer it's this one it's Tales of the Old Margrave buy this if you want to run a enchanted forest that has a lot of stuff going on, that has adventures, that has a forest that really messes with you, uh, buy this one. It doesn't have anything to do with the video of today. I just want to say there is a lot of books. There are a lot of books out there for the Midgard campaign setting. If you have any questions, if I can answer them in the comments themselves, I will answer them. Otherwise, I will answer, answer them in the next video. I hope your inspiration may guide you.